Are we in the spotlight still facing calls for his resignation after the Prime Minister asked his independent ethics adviser to investigate the party chairman's tax affairs? Now, all of this, as I'm sure you know, uh, follows reports that uh, Mr Zahawi paid a penalty to the tax office while he was Chancellor. In a statement, he said he was confident that he acted properly throughout. Joining us now in the studio, former <laughs> special adviser to Nadim Zahawi uh, when he was Education Secretary, and that's Mark Lane. Uh, Mark, good to see you this this morning. Good morning. Um, it is a bit of a mess, this, all of it, more than a bit of a mess. It's not a good look. Um, is this the end of Nadim Zahawi's political career? Well, I'm obviously really biased because I got to work with yep. him for just under a year and um, I hope not because in the time that I worked with him, I found him to be really straight. He's a really, really lovely guy. He, he was an exceptionally good education secretary, I think. But I totally understand, like, I don't know any more about this situation than you guys do, than what we've seen in the press. And I totally understand that when you hear about people potentially not paying their tax, it really cuts to the quick, doesn't it? It, it really offends our sense of fair play. And do you not think that paying a, a seven-figure... Uh, penalty to HMRC is indicative of wrongdoing and if even if the HMRC find that the Chancellor had been careless that's not exactly the highest standards of professionalism that we expect. I don't think there's any doubt that it's pretty embarrassing for, for Nadim but like I said I don't know any more about it than you guys do and it's one of those awkward situations now where there's this independent inquiry going on we're gonna have to wait and see what the Prime Minister's okay. ethics well, advice is. I mean obviously the, the spotlight and you know the, you see these pictures he looks like some sort of Bond villain and he's being painted in the, the front of the, the Times um, here, here this morning. But the spotlight is not just on him. The spotlight has to be on the Prime Minister as well as regards um, his, uh, what am I trying to say, his decision, his choice-making. Yeah, and when you're trying to put a government together... If you're the Prime Minister, you've got a, a relatively limited number of people you can pull from in order to make cabinet ministers and ministers and so on. You will be briefed by the officials and by other people within the party as to who's available and what their skill sets are. And for some people, you may be briefed that there are things you need to be aware of that aren't necessarily so um, publicly available. And so you have to put the best people in the best places possible. You don't always get you know, everyone you get to pick from. But I mean... Rishi Sunak is clearly expending some political capital on Nadim Zahawi, isn't he? He's obviously taken that decision not to sack him outright or even suspend him pending this inquiry. And it does have a sort of smack of the Boris era, does it not? So organise an inquiry and sort of kick it down the road and talk about it later. Because that's going to be the rebut we get from every single person we speak to. The rebuttal will be, there's an investigation we can't possibly say any more. And yet the public have a right to demand questions, to know when those questions will be answered. You're absolutely right, and, people. And the Prime Minister will have that pressure building on him, as Eamon says. Yeah, he will do. And of course, people will want to know. But actually, an, an important part of integrity and doing things in the right way is to try and let independent people go about their work, trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, I don't think this inquiry is going to take forever because that pressure like you said is going to build and build and build and every time a politician goes on the news from the government they're going to be asked by people like yourselves you know what do you think about the Nadeem Sahari situation and so on and we don't want that to go on but right now we don't really know any more than the media reports yeah. out there and so I think we Mark, need to let that inquiry go well, on. What we do it. know you were a special advisor right very interesting job very interesting what you do uh, you advise people who then end up um, implementing law creating new laws and whatever now, you just heard that um, psychologist uh, that, that we were speaking to uh, about the, that terrible Zara Alina murder from Jordan McSweeney. And she talked about, this was just the probation service, but mm. you worked in education. We mm. could be talking about education. We could be talking about uh, prison service. We could be talking about doctors, anything. But lack of training, not enough staff, not enough resources. Overall, this picture, underfunding throughout the whole public sector, what is the reality that politicians have to face up to or we, the general public, have to face up to about the services we are provided? You've made a really, really good point. And actually, before I came into the world of Westminster, I was a teacher and head teacher for 15 years. I set up a secondary school in Bedford where I live and I was a head teacher there for five years. And you are right that in some parts of our public services, the amount of money available, which then enables resources and training for staff, that is an issue. But it isn't just about money. Mindset and the way 
way stuff is organised is really important as well. Now, I don't always make myself popular with um, my teacher friends. I'm a third generation teacher, most of my friends are teachers. I don't always make myself popular when I point out that actually our school system is pretty well funded, particularly by international standards. It's what we do with that money right. and how that money gets to the right place at the right time. Well, what, really are we do, what are we doing with that money that is going to waste? So it's not that it's necessarily going to waste, it's just it's not necessarily getting to the right place at the right time. And again, coming back to Nadim, when uh, Nadim was Education Secretary, we did an awful lot of work about trying to figure out the best way to organise our schools and our teachers in order that money and therefore resource and support could get to the right place at the right time. But that takes a lot of effort and time to do. And then to roll out changes in the public sector, because they're so big and they involve so many people and they involve so many, in schools' cases, pupils and adults, that can take a long time. As uh, Dr Taylor was saying about the probation service and about working with yeah. offenders, that again is a very complex One of, one of the things situation. that really gets me about education is that when I look at the budgets and you want to give teachers a pay rise, then you've got to make cuts within your budget so you'll have uh, less teaching assistants or uh, less teachers mm -hmm. uh, as a result of something like that. But also buildings. I look and I think, why is it the, the academics, teachers' responsibility to make sure that the double glazing is intact or that the roof is not leaking? It sort of seems to me unfair that their budget is being used in the maintenance of buildings. So again, you're making another really good point there. So actually, back in the autumn statement in November, the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt found an extra £2.3 billion a year for schools next year and the year after. That actually takes the amount of money per pupil back to record levels in real terms, back to where it was and then a bit higher than it was under Labour in 2009-10. Yeah. So the amount of money schools have to spend, like I said, is, a, is OK. On the capital side of things, the amount of money they need to maintain schools, that is an issue. We normally build schools to last sort of 60, 70, 80 years in pretty good nick, but we're replacing our school estate on the rate of one in every 400 years. Mm. So you can see that at some point yeah. a government is going to have to somehow find the money to do a lot of the maintenance, refurbishment and rebuilding of the school system. Mm. It's a huge well, it's a, it's a complicated and it's, a, it's just a very depressing uh, picture overall. Uh, Mark Lehane, thank you very much indeed for your take. He's a former special advisor to uh, the Education Secretary, as he was then, Nadeem Sahawi, uh, then. And uh, I'm sure you've got lots of interesting things to talk about in the public sector and education mm -hmm. in particular. But for the moment, Mark, thank you. Thank you very much okay. indeed.